What are we doing today? Coffee roasting. So you want to roast some green coffee, but you don't want to fool around with a $1,300 roaster or you know even a $200 roaster. And uh, you got some tools laying around and a heat gun and stuff like that. So this is one example of what you can do. Got some of this idea off the internet, of course, where else? You take a eight cup sifter, flour sifter, it's got a little screen in there and everything, and you just hold it over a heat gun and crank this thing for 11 minutes and you've got some roasted coffee. So, a couple different ways to accomplish that. If you don't want to hold it over here like I did manually when I was first testing this, you gotta build yourself a little stand. Now, the stand has a hole in the bottom, of course, and you've got to set this up so that you've got the right distance to the bottom of your beans. You know, probably about an inch and a half, something like that, depending on your heat gun. Now, this is an old, ancient Milwaukee heat gun that I got here, and uh, it's got two settings. It's got cold and hot. You put it on hot with these things wide open, the vents on the side here, and you get about 700 degrees which is just about right. You can close these a little bit and bump up the temperature, you know, it goes up above 900 or something like that. So, depending on your distance in here and how cold it is outside or whatever, you may have to adjust this a little bit. Like today I might have to actually crank this up just a little bit more to get this done within about, you know, 10, 11 minutes. If it's hot outside and you've got this thing on about 700, you should be able to do a batch in 10 minutes which is exactly the same as a uh, commercial roaster. So, you know, you'll just have to fool around with it. So uh, when it was cold yesterday, this took me about 13 minutes. So, you know, you're in the ballpark anyway. Now, what I did, this particular brand of sifter, you can grab the beater bar inside and you can unscrew this and take it out. It's got threads on it. So what I wound up doing was, I took a piece of brass rod that I had and put threads on one end to go into the adapter there and just cut it off nice and straight out here to attach on my right angle cordless drill to power this thing. Now if you have the original bar here you could put this in a vise and you could bend this straight and then saw it off somewhere with a hacksaw and attach your drill. I mean it's you don't have a lot to work with here so you will have to bend this out. Now I've got my tablet out here with its timer set for 11 minutes on here and got some beans here. I happen to pick these up from Sweet Maria's. Uh, you buy green unroasted beans, they should be about six bucks a pound, something like that. If you buy 50 pounds of this stuff, you can get it down to like four dollars a pound uh, in a lot of places. So anyway, this is some uh, Ethiopian here that we're gonna try out today and see if we can reproduce the results from yesterday. This is some Brazil dry process. And this was done in about 11 minutes. And you can see that looks perfect and it smells delicious. So there you are. And what I'm gonna do is, this is a one pound bag, I'm gonna pour half the bag into here and gonna roast that up. You might not have a right angle drill like this. I mean, that's fine. You could use a normal drill mounted on here if you wanna build a little stand for the drill, uh, any kind of cordless or whatever. And you use the old hose clamp around the trigger autopilot, as I like to call it. Now. The cool thing is about this right angle Milwaukee is it's got a sloped trigger on it. So even if you loosen this thing all the way and shut the drill off, the band won't fall down the tool. Like sometimes, you know, if you had a regular uh, pistol grip style deal. And the other little trick I did, I went to AutoZone here in the US and I picked up some of these. These are made by Kohler and they're a hose clamp with a removable key that goes on here. Cool thing is, Everybody else I see on YouTube and stuff, they're always here with a screwdriver or a little wrench trying to crank this to, to make this thing operate. Best thing about this little key, just turn it. And you can get it any speed you want. On the fly, no problem. all the way down to off. So this is beautiful here. You get a pack of these. Um, they're two and three quarter inch size. I think they're like number 36's fit on this drill uh, around the handle of this thing and they're about three dollars. 
So well worth it to have easy control over this. And see, you know, some people might say, well, you know, doing all this is, uh, you know, a whole bunch of overkill or something like that. But, you know, rather than sit here and uh, crank this thing for 11 minutes, I mean, there's all kinds of other stuff you could be doing. You know, you could be like pumping iron. You could be doing 16 ounce curls. Oh yeah, oh man, better do the other hand. Oh, yeah. All right, perfect. All right, let's get roasting. Get your green beans and load them in here. And there we go, that's about half a pound. And the beans are going to go through a bunch of stages. They're green like this. You're going to roll them around in here for a couple minutes, and then you're going to see chaff come off of them, which is the uh, outer shell, you know, kind of little paper and wispy-like. So this is nice because the heat gun blows all the chaff out of here. It's going to get all over your table, so, you know, you might not want to do this inside. Some other guys put a screen over the top of this to catch all the chaff. Um, you know, that is if they use a sifter like this. I don't know how many people actually do. Um, this method originally came from uh, guys using a heat gun and a metal dog bowl with a wooden spoon, just stirring them. So this is a lot cooler. So uh, yeah, you're going to have your green and it's going to roll through and it's going to start getting tan colored and then pretty soon you're going to get close to, uh, you know, around 10, 11 minutes, depending on how, where your heat gun is or whatever, you're going to get close to what's called first crack. And you're going to hear it start popping like popcorn in here. That's when everything's really evenly brown. And about 30 seconds later, you're going to go into second crack, which for some coffee is, I guess, too far or whatever. So right at around that, you know, 10, 11 minutes, you really got to start uh, taking a look in here and see if uh, you've got it roasted to the level that you want. And you want them, you know, nice and evenly dark or whatever, I guess. Uh, and, uh, you know, not like burned or anything like that. So uh, that's when you wind up stopping. Now, around 10, 11 minutes, you need to immediately cool down the beans. So there's a couple different ways to do that. Some guys will take it out of here and dump it into a bowl, go back and forth between two bowls, you know, to cool these things down. Well, this particular heat gun has a cold setting. So I just flip it on cold and I leave it agitating here. So I put my hand over the top and you can feel the heat come off the beans. You know, the gun will get cold within, you know, 20 seconds or something like that. And all the other heat coming out of here is from the beans. So you can just kind of tell quickly by putting your hand over the top, you know, what kind of uh, temperature you're getting here. So this is the way to do it. So let's fire it up. Hit start on our timer. And crank up the speed. And what this agitation does is it makes sure that, you know, the beans don't sit right over there for any length of time over the end of the outlet of the heat gun so they don't burn. So we'll check back in a couple minutes. It's been about three minutes and you're starting to see some chaff come off the beans. Uh, the beans start expanding a little bit and that outer shell, uh, little pieces of it will start coming off. So pretty soon it's going to look like a whole snowstorm of chaff all over this table. All right, it's been about six minutes. And you notice all the beans are tan now. All right, it's been 11 minutes and I'm starting to hear some popping. Okay, we're getting lots of chaff here. I just added a minute to the timer. and get some pops and snaps out of this. Maybe you can hear those. Okay, it's been 13 minutes and now we got a lot of popping going on. We're very close to being done. You can hear 
the snapping over here, maybe. Everybody. So it'll vary a little bit depending on your setup, of course. And if you've gone too far, you'll get a bunch of smoke off the beans. There we go, getting a little tiny bit of smoke and hearing a lot of crackling. So, this is probably all set here. I'm going to switch it to cool. Once you switch it to cool, the beans will still keep crackling a little bit. They're still going to cook because they're still pretty hot. So I like to set this to a uh, stopwatch and start this running just to tell me how long it takes to cool down. It takes about roughly four minutes to get dead cold, I think. And you can tell by putting your hand over the top. You'll feel tons of heat pouring off the beans for a little while. Okay, six minutes later, and they're done. This thing is dead cold. And there you have it. And those are great looking. So there's all different roast levels and all these uh, coffee snobs will uh, you know tell you like what type of roast this is. You know there's like city, full city and whatever. And uh, this just looks good. They, uh, they look nice and brown without being destroyed and scorched and stuff like that. If they turn black, oily and charcoal-y, well then you know you've gone way too far. So. What you're looking at is, um, if it's uh, nice and warm outside, like, you know, 80 degrees summertime and you're doing this, I mean, you'll be done in 15 minutes total with this thing. A uh, little cooler outside, like it's 60 degrees today out here, I mean, it could take up to 20 minutes to, uh, to do this, because you've got to get that heat up there in the first place, and then the, the cooling down will be a little quicker. So, you know, that's, uh, that's not so bad. And what you do is, once you're done roasting, you take these, put them in a glass jar, or any kind of container. Uh, don't put a lid on them for 24 hours. And it lets all the CO2 come off the beans and uh, you know they they let out gases and stuff like that and then after your you know anywhere 12 to 24 hours something like that put them in a sealed jar sealed glass jar plastic whatever you want to do and um, you know or a foil bag or something like that and uh, that will keep them fresh. Supposedly everybody says, uh, you know, you can keep the green beans like six months and these are good for like six days after you roast them. They're at their peak. So all the bagged coffee that you get in supermarkets and stuff like that is just really nasty. It's been sitting around for months and it, it's probably just no good. I guess they turn rancid after a while or something like that, you know, like any other type of uh, bean or, or nut or something like that. So, uh, you know, if you do it this way, you know, it takes you 15 minutes and uh, you're all set and you're ready to enjoy some good coffee after a day. And plus it's a lot cheaper, six bucks a pound or less in bulk. I mean, come on. And once your roasting's all done, then you can get yourself one of these uh, really nice hand grinders. This is a Hario or Kyocera with the ceramic uh, burrs inside here that you don't have to worry about them rusting or anything like that. I'll put a link to this up on my Amazon channel. This is about $40. And, uh, you know, that's pretty cool. And for my next trick on here, I'm going to get a gasifier and put it underneath here, a clean running one with a fan, uh, possibly like a BioLite. And I'm going to do this like totally off-grid style. So you don't need the big 14 amp power sucking thing here. But, uh, you know, that's going to come a little bit later. And uh, you want a gasifier that burns very clean so you don't have the tars coming out of the wood onto your beans. You know, giving them some weird off flavors or something like that. So anyway, I hope this has been uh, 
informative, and uh, there you go. Another way to roast coffee with Milwaukee. If you want to pick up one of these, uh, go to my website link down below, and uh, I'll have an Amazon link there for you for this particular model. If you want to get it, because I know it works good, you can unscrew the uh, arm out of it, all that kind of stuff. And uh, I'll put some other links to some uh, useful items too. Uh, the right angle drill, if you want it, I'll put that up there too. So, anyway, enjoy.